SpaceX, is still getting ready for its Starship Mars rocket's first-ever orbital test flight. At its South Texas facility, SpaceX fired up Ship 24, a model of the 50-meter-tall upper-stage spacecraft for Starship, in another static fire test back on December 15. At 2 p.m. Eastern, one of the ship's six Raptor engines fired for almost seven seconds while it was still tethered to the ground. Lab Padre recorded a video of the quick test. Also, many thanks for his tireless work as always. The static fire test was also broadcast by SpaceX from every angle imaginable. A static fire gamut has already been run through the Starship prototype. For instance, it lit up all six of its Raptors in September. Regardless, a static fire test with a single engine is still a major success. Of course, since no engine test records were broken, this triumph has nothing to do with engines. However, after successfully lighting all six engines on its Starship prototype in September, this test is the first static fire SpaceX has carried out on Ship 24 in more than three months. Additionally, it is the first test of Ship 24 since it finished its reinforcements. As was previously reported, SpaceX has reinforced the weld lines connecting the steel ring parts of the vehicle in the weeks prior to the first orbital flight test. The latest static fire, nevertheless, represents a turning point even though the work is completely finished. On the other side, this test might be performed to assess the launch pad's condition following repair. Although the Starship appeared to have survived its initial six-engine test in September, the launch pad was not as fortunate. Starship S24's six engines could have generated up to 1,380 tons of thrust. The surrounding concrete was melted during the eight prolonged seconds of blast furnace conditions, which also sent a hailstorm of microscopic, superheated globules in practically every direction. In fact, there was something that might easily catch fire in practically every direction. Even though the issue that resembled a trash fire was eventually resolved, there were still remnants of destruction, and they are not appealing. Simply look at the launch pad at the time. It was in disrepair. After that, SpaceX upgraded and repaired ground-level hardware. Fortunately, the outcome matches expectations. This most recent test was successful. At least nothing is falling or shooting, which is good. Of course, the impact will be more obvious when SpaceX performs another test with its six engines, though we're not sure when that test will start. We'd rather see the attack test of 33 engines on Booster 7 at this time. Everything at SpaceX is being upgraded quickly in anticipation of this eagerly anticipated test. Currently, the business has two 12-hour test windows scheduled for December 19 and 22. SpaceX is intensifying their preparations for its landmark launch, but Russia's Suzy rocket has just run into a significant issue. On that Wednesday about 7.45 p.m. Eastern, a leak from a Russian crew capsule in space caused coolant to be released into low Earth orbit. This took place a little under two hours before a planned spacewalk. An ongoing investigation by NASA and Russia has indefinitely postponed the next spacewalk. This is a developing story. First and foremost, the crew on the ice as is safe. This visible stream of flakes, NASA communications officer Rob Navias described the site during a live stream, raises a question of whether or not the Expedition 68 crew on the ice as will face a hurdle to come home next year. The journey both ways will be made by the crew capsule. In March 2023, the Expedition 68 mission is expected to come to a close. On September 21, three astronauts took the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft to low Earth orbit. That includes Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Petlin, two Russian cosmonauts, who were about to leave the Poisk module airlock of the International Space Station in preparation for a spacewalk. The third passenger on the Soyuz was NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, who was not participating with the spacewalk. According to NASA's space station block, the crew members on board the space station are safe and were not in any risk during the leak. According to a post from NASA's space station Twitter account, the space station is in fine shape and the Expedition 6-8 crew is secure. The two were about to leave on a seven-hour spacewalk, EVA or extravehicular activity, when the leak occurred. This technique would have continued the work Prokopiev and Pedlin's spacewalk from November 17th. 
In order to move a radiator from the eyes as Razvitz module and attach it to the Naka multipurpose laboratory module, this would have been the 12th ISS spacewalk of 2022. The Naka spacecraft, which joined the ISS in 2021, also had a dramatic episode upon arrival when one of its thrusters malfunctioned and tilted the space station away from its normal orbital orientation. In the course of their ongoing inquiry, NASA and the Russian space agency Roscosmos have only partially released their findings as of Thursday afternoon, December 15. The spacewalk has been cancelled, and ground teams in Moscow are evaluating the nature of the fluid and potential impacts on the integrity of the Soyuz spacecraft, which carried Prokopi Petalin and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio into space after launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on September 21, NASA shared in a blog post. The cosmonauts did not exit the space station, no crew members were exposed to the leaking coolant, NASA wrote. In a later post, NASA officials shared that the suspected leak source is the external radiator cooling loop of the Soyuz. Roscosmos is closely monitoring Soyuz spacecraft temperatures, which remain within acceptable limits, NASA added. In order to aid in determining the site of the exterior leak, NASA and Roscosmos continued to coordinate external imaging and inspection plans. Plans call for a further examination of the Soyuz exterior using the station's robotic arm, the Canid Arm 2. The postponement of their earlier spacewalk was caused by a loss of pressure in the heating system of the Soyuz spacecraft that was connected to the station, according to the Russian state news agency TASS. Preliminary analysis, according to a second TASS piece, indicates that the instrumentation and equipment compartment of the Soyuz MS-22 crew spacecraft's exterior casing is where the leak originated. According to TASS, the crew later claimed that a sensor in the spaceship's fault detection system had activated, alerting them to a drop in cooling system pressure. Former NASA astronauts took to Twitter to voice their concerns. Former Twin Study U.S. astronaut Scott Kelly called the leak a serious situation. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield shared his thoughts via the social media platform as well. Since my first flight to the Russian space station Mir back 17 years ago, I've always maintained that the favorite pastime of astronauts is, is looking at the world out the window. It is, it is so fundamentally beautiful and mesmerizing, and I've been doing my best with words to try and describe it ever since I first saw it from onboard the space shuttle Atlantis just after we launched describing its nature as serious and then adding not good. Lots of fast decision-making going on. Sad to say, but this pretty much wraps it up for today's episode. Hopefully you all learned something new in today's video. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your input on this matter and we'll be responding to a lot of your comments. Before we wrap up, it would mean the world to us if you all pounded the like and subscribe button. Our hearts are always full from your care, enthusiasm, and support. I guess it's farewells for now. Till the next video drop, you all take care.